Since the golden hour is very crucial in all cardiac incidents, are cardiologists creating enough awareness among patients and caregivers? To know more about this, we have with us Dr. Prikash Mujumdar from Kolkata to tell us what he and his organization are doing on this front. Thank you for speaking to Express Healthcare and for taking time off from your busy schedule to speak to us. You've been involved in treating patients both in the Western system of medicine as well as in India. You've taught, you've treated patients in UK, in Switzerland, and for the last eight years, you're now here in India. So you've seen patients from a varied genetic pool. How do you see uh, patients from different genetic pools responding to treatments? and how are they predispositionally involved? Now, if we compare the Western population with the Indian population, so we all know that uh, the South Asian gene that we have is much more predisposed to have heart artery diseases or coronary artery diseases in the earlier age compared to the Western population. And we see heart attacks a decade earlier compared to the Caucasian population. So, for example, in my practice when I was in UK, the majority of the heart attack used to come uh, after the fifth decade or sixth decade. But over the last eight years when I'm practicing in India, in uh, Apollo Glenagos Hospital, I see patients with heart attack as young as 22, 25, 30, 35. So this is genetic in a way that uh, South Asian population are much more predisposed to have uh, coronary artery disease and heart attacks in a very early age. So it is important that we address this issue. And as a healthcare provider or as a healthcare worker, everyone should be aware of this. And the best possible way is to prevent this happening in a very early age. So we all need to work together, the doctors, the patients, the families, the non-government organization as well as the government so that we can address this issue of heart attacks and coronary artery disease uh, in a very early uh, manner so that uh, eventually patients do not suffer from a heart attack. But because the, you know, the impact of having a heart attack in an early age is, is tremendous. It's not only on that particular person, but it's in general, uh, is an impact on our economy as well because a young person with a massive heart attack if it's not economically productive then it's a disaster for the society so in the long run if in younger individuals are getting heart attacks then i would say in the other way that we will not be able to get young workforce in the longer run which is actually needed in our country for our development in future attack okay Dr. Mujumdar, you also have a very special interest in teaching and research and uh, for upcoming uh, cardiologists. So what is your advice to them? The strength of doctor is actually the knowledge. So that's very important and it's changing every day. So I think over the last 20 years, the amount of research which has been done in the cardiology field and no other field of medicine probably uh, was, uh, I would say, lucky enough to have that much of research. So every question that we ask, we had a randomized control trial uh, quite a lot of randomized control trial on that, and it's very important that we keep ourselves up to date. And our young cardiologists, uh, they also need to know not only about the techniques of doing these procedures, but also the decision-making process is very important, that what to do, and I sometimes say it is even important what not to do, to learn. Okay. And Doctor, you also spoke about randomized clinical trials. And uh, also, you know, a lot in India, there are a lot of stents being manufactured today. And a lot of these stents are also being exported to other countries. Uh, and there are also a lot of randomized clinical trials happening with these stents. For instance, you have the talent trial, which was started two years ago. The second year data was released in September uh, 2019. Uh, you're familiar with these trials. What is the data 
coming out from these trials telling you as a clinician and uh, would uh, do they recommend using such uh, you know uh, stents in uh, clinical practice now in in cardiology practice whenever we use any device uh, be it a stent or be it pacemaker or whatever we always look at what data do we have to support that we are going to use that particular device now i think it's a very welcome move by the indian stents who actually decided to uh, get data uh, and compare that with zions which is a uh, you know very trusted stent throughout the world and in the talent uh, st- trial as you said the two year two year data came and it's a non inferiority uh, trial and uh, this stent was actually you know, pretty much uh, gave the same result compared to the zion stent and that is very encouraging because and these data were all collected uh, mostly in the western world and uh, i would expect that uh, we should look in as well rather than only looking out because uh, india is a country where the coronary artery disease is going exponentially up and our coronary arteries are a bit different from the western coronary arteries and it will be interesting to look how these stents behave in the indian population so uh, the tal- talent trial uh, this cerulea masiluting alter 3 strut strut stent was used compared with the zions zion stent and it was very interesting to see the results were comparable uh, with the uh, zion stent so that's very encouraging from the indian industry point of view and now is the time to look into what are the outcome in the indian real world, uh, world patients when you using these 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 stents not only particular these stents any indian manufacturing stents uh, they they if they want to do well then they have to be backed by robust data from the indian population so this time has come that we should uh, do it in india as well okay Uh, heart stents is a 20 year old technology already so what are the new techniques and technologies which you are observing which are going you think are going to be uh, quite big in the decade ahead right one thing i would say that you know uh, one doing an angioplasty not all the angioplasty is the same so we all know that doing an angioplasty we need a stent uh, apart from the stent there are a lot of other things that we need to look into so we are increasingly doing more complex angioplasty than what we used to do over the last 10 or 20 years so we are also venturing those areas where previously only a bypass operation was considered so increasingly with advent of technologies and our understanding of the coronary artery disease we are uh, kind of you know going towards the surgical territory and instead of having a surgery we are been able to do angioplasty in those cases and you know saving a bypass operation so to do that we need a lot of equipments right so the most recently which a uh, fantastic equipment i have recently used it it's you know many of the arteries are very much calcified that means they have a lot of calcium in it and only with the balloon we can't open it up so there is a new technology called shock wave technology which uh, has come is like uh, doing a lithotripsy we all knew that lithotripsy was used in the kidneys. kidneys but now with the shock wave technology we are using inside the coronary artery to crack the calcium and then once this calcium is cracked then we can inflict and open up the artery much better with the balloon and stent so uh, previously sometimes those patients who had completely occluded artery for years there is no other option but to do you know a bypass operation in those patients we call it chronic total occlusion in those patients also oh, we have new gadgets hardware like stents and balloons and wires and microcatheters those are helping us to open up the chronically occluded artery which were probably occluded for many years before and now we 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 are been able to do that so so the more complicated and 
you know, otherwise, uh, otherwise we wouldn't have tried those cases before. Nowadays, we are trying to do with angioplasty. That's one thing from the coronary point of view. So apart from coronary, the other thing which is coming into the intervention field is the structural heart disease, particularly the aortic stenosis, uh, which is coming up hugely over the last few years. We call the TAVI procedure or uh, transcutaneous aortic valve, a transcatheter aortic valve implantation, where you don't need to open the chest up to change the aortic valve, uh, which is narrow, uh, but we can deliver the valve through the groin, just like putting a stent valve into the uh, aorta near the aortic, aort if the aortic valve is narrow. So this is a condition where the aortic valve gets narrow, particularly in the elderly population who is above 70 or 75 or 80, and otherwise will be very high risk for doing an open uh, you know, operation because many a times this elderly population had a lot of other problems as well, like the lung problem, like uh, diabetes, kidney problems. So they make them high risk for having a surgical op valve operation. So nowadays we do not need to open that chest. We can deliver the aortic valve uh, just like another stent valve through the groin and it's much less invasive and this is coming up as well. Now we are doing other things like you know left atrial appendage occluder. This is one uh, device that is we put into the left atrium, that's the left upper chamber of the heart and we seclude the left atrial appendage from the heart so that the clot cannot go from the left atrial appendage to brain and can prevent stroke, particularly in those patients who cannot take blood thinner for prevention of stroke. So these are the new areas which uh, are upcoming in India. And over the years, I think next few years, it, it will be much more popular in India. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Muzindar, for speaking to us, for speaking to Express Healthcare. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keep watching us for new updates on Indian Stents Get Updated. Thank you.